AMD's latest CPUs like the 9950X 3D and the 9800X 3D are fast. They are clearly the fastest gaming CPUs on the market. But that doesn't mean that we can't make them just a little bit faster with overclocking. It has been proven and I've proven it myself that when overclocking these CPUs to the max, you do get higher performance something I'm always looking for. One kind of downside though of overclocking is that you do get increased temperatures, which kind of limits you a little bit. That's why all these different mods I've done over the years, past Intel CPUs, I did direct die on a 10900K, I delitted a 1300K, I used a direct die AIO with a 14900KS. So I was bound to do something with AMD which is why back in January of this year, I picked up the Noctua NHD15 indirect die frame from Thermal Grizzly. The reason why I did this is because I believed that this would be the highest performing, lowest temperature way that I can get the most out of my CPU. When using Precision Boost Overdrive, the higher your temperatures get, you start to downclock and it does actually cause some issues. For most PBO setups though, just a decent cooler will be all you need. But if you are doing ECLK, which I am allowed to do on my X870E Strix from ASUS, I can actually push it past AMD's kind of set limits of PBO, allowing it to boost to like 5.5, 5.6, even with the right temperatures, 5.7. But I wasn't get able to get it stable. Direct die did help me a little bit, but it was not really what I expected. Air coolers kind of have a limit. You can't really go insane on them. Once the heat pipes get heat soaked, you are kind of limited and you kind of will continually get increased heat. As well as also something that a lot of people do not really mention. If you have a high powered graphics card like my 5090, that is going to be throwing heat directly into your CPU, heating it up, causing things to downclock. Something I really noticed with the 9950X 3D, the 9800X 3D, not so much. So something that always stayed in the back of my mind was, let me pick up a high performance air cooler like the Liquid Freezer 3 from Arctic and the high performance heat spreader for AM5 from Thermal Grizzly. This thing promises to have 240% higher surface area than your normal heat spreader that you will see on your AMD CPU. And I mean like, yeah, here's my 9950X 3D that is still sealed and everything. Look at the IHS versus the heat spreader. These two are night and day. This is significantly more and you can literally feel the heft on this. This thing is heavy. So what is better? We will start off by comparing my NHD15 with the Direct Die. We will be comparing that to the heat spreader and the Liquid Freezer 3. Before we actually get into a temperature comparison though, I do want to show you the actual cost difference, which might actually kind of sway you one way. Starting off with the things that you will 100% need no matter whether you choose the air cooler or the liquid cooler, you're going to need some way to actually remove the IHS from your CPU. You're going to need a D-Lid die mate that's going to be $50 straight up. Just get it. You can use it with all your AM5 CPUs, so not just 7000 series or 9000 series. As long as they continue using the same IHS, you're going to need one of these and you're going to be able to use it. So if you're doing a lot of D-Lids, this is actually not that bad of an investment. I've done one, but I can do a couple more just with CPUs I have around and people I know. Um, charge like 50 bucks to delid your friend's CPUs, and boom, you've made your money back. Um, that's actually what some companies do in case you're interested. As well as also, you're gonna need some conductor knot, liquid metal. Um, one gram should be enough. This is also what you're gonna use to remove the solder. So just kind of put some on it, leave it, spread it. I'm not really into like explaining all of that today, but looking into the air cooler and what you're gonna do, you're gonna to need to buy a $180 air cooler. Um, I think mine was like 150 when I got it back in December. So prices have gone up. It looks like these are, this is sold by Noctua. So like this is how much Noctua is selling it for. Um, I do the LBC. Noctua has like a special diagram up that they recommend what you do. For me, I did offset direct die. It said LBC was the best. LBC versus I think HBC are like Intel and AMD specific and they just have a straight flat one which is if you don't know what platform you're gonna use and you can use one of these for the next 10 years. That is kind of the one thing I will say. You're gonna be able to use an air cooler for the next forever. This thing won't die, the fans will go out, but heat pipes don't die. So this is definitely gonna be one of those things that you could use it for the next 10, 15 years um, versus a AIO might die, the pump might die, even out of warranty, and you're gonna to have to buy a new one. You're also going to wanna do, I just recommend direct die here, 30, four dollars so not a bad bad deal at all one thing i will say though 
this is technically not compatible with the 9800X3D. Mine works perfectly fine. Drew Bauer did leave a video on my direct dye video where he kind of explained that sometimes the glue that they put around the actual capacitors on the CPU, sometimes they put a lot on it and that causes it to not work, which kind of removes the whole point of direct dye if you can't use the direct dye frame. I originally actually bought the V1 frame and I realized it would not work back when I had a 7800X3D. So yeah, they made this V2, it has a little more space, but just keep that in mind, you should be fine, hopefully, but it might not work. If you decide to go with the liquid cooled option though, you can do what I did and buy a B stock liquid freezer 3 360. Um, this is probably you're gonna be your best bet. It's a super high quality AIO. B stock, this comes directly from Arctic, like Arctic is the seller, Arctic official US store USA. Um, read more. And what it says is that um, the original packaging may be damaged. Item is complete, fully functional. I've already tested. I have, or checked, I opened the box. I have every single accessory that I should have had. So that's good. I have a six year warranty. Um, I actually did not notice that my copper plate was scratched or anything. Um, yeah, I haven't tested to see if I have thermal paste, but I have thermal paste anyways. So that doesn't matter. Um, and then the, th the heat spreader. So $51, I think that's how much I paid for it. Um, so this is about $100. Now, I am going to be using Fantex T30s. I've had these fans for like four or five years now at this point. So this is like fine. But if you want high quality fans, think about picking up the Liquid Freezer 3 Pro. Now there is a non RGB one. Currently it's like out of stock and it actually costs a little bit more to ship versus this one's like $91. The other one's like 107 after tax. Um, but like this is going to have better fans. That's the only difference between the three and the three pro. I think the sleeving on the tubing is a little different too, but I don't really care about that. But as we can see, let's see, they have pictures of the fans, not any good ones, but these have an extra blade. There's high quality fans. They're, um, P12 maxes with an extra blade. So super high quality. So let's do some calculations here. Let me see. So if you want to do Noctua, you can do 180 plus 34, and that's $214. Not including the two things you're going to guarantee need. I'm not including those in that. Or you can do, let's say 52 plus $7 shipping. We'll do $60 plus 51. Heat spreader, 111. So it is $100 cheaper to do this. And you don't have to worry about, for me, I move my PC around, I go to, to and from school, and I am kind of worried always about, oh, is something gonna hit? Or, oh, is that really heavy heat gonna mess up my CPU and kill it? Um, as well as also, this is going to be a lot cheaper too. This is gonna be $140 if you want the high quality AIO. I understand both. I will leave links down to everything I've just mentioned down below, but now let's take a look at temperatures. I'm gonna give you guys a little info on what the actual like PBO settings I'm using. So I'm using 6200, 2666 for the memory. That doesn't really matter as much just for temperatures, but I am using in PBO. I'm using PBO, not all core. We are doing enabled with 200 megahertz offset, 1X scalar and 95C. This is what gives me the best performance in PBO. These are the settings I do recommend. Maybe if you guys want, I'll do a AMD BIOS guide fully for you guys, showing every setting I change and everything that kind of like I recommend with benchmarks to back it up. But um, there actually is one for the uh, supporters right now in the Discord, but 1.3 SOC. And then these are my voltages. Here we are at the PC. This is with the Noctua Direct Die. We will be using Y Crunch to test and HW Info to actually check the temperatures. So we're going to be doing two, eight, 18, enter. We'll be using VT3. Why VT3? Because this not only hits the CPU really hard, but also the memory. Why? Because this memory is going to be heated up as well. And that is something I care about with overclocking. So let's, just run this and we're gonna run this for about 10 minutes and I'll get back to you guys and we'll take a look at the temperatures. All right, 10 minutes later. So let's take a look. 
So temps right now 75 degrees. It says it average 68. I don't know. Let's look at frequency. That's really what we want to be looking at right now as well. So looking at frequency, we're seeing about, I don't know, 50, 50. Averaging about, let's see, 5.4, running 4.4 right now. That seems a little off though. But as you can see, it's obviously down clocking, something that we do not want. And it's just not what we want. We want to see like 54, 25 the entire time like we're seeing right there. Let's also look at RAM temperatures now. These are super duper important. So we're looking at about 40 on the dim closest to the CPU and 36 on the one farther, so two and four. These aren't bad at all, like I'm not gonna be running into issues, but if we start throwing in a GPU at it as well, pulling 600 watts, that's when we're gonna have some trouble. Currently power draw as well is just because I think that is important that you guys know, 113 watts. So let's keep that in mind. Let's see what we can do now with the Liquid Freezer 3. Let's tear the PC apart. Before I actually take apart the Noctua, let's actually take a look at what my airflow looks like. So we have airflow coming in from the front and the bottom, obviously cooling the 5090, as well as giving the, this is obviously normally on the CPU, but I thought I'd do this. And I do have exhaust right here and here. The only thing I did change was I actually made this an intake to kind of bring air in, and then that's gonna be switched for the AIO, but that is something that I can do. One thing I did not mention is, uh, I do have a RAM fan. This is from John's Bow. This thing just kind of plugs screws into where you screw in your motherboard, and this will cool the RAM. I actually can't have this with the Noctua, but I can here. I'm not going to do this for today's video because I did not kind of mention it, but I probably will add this soon. So that is kind of something to keep in mind, but I will not be doing it for today's video. But I will link this because I am a massive fan of this and something that I think looks good as well as performs amazingly well. But now let's take apart, take off the AIO, the air cooler, duh, put in the AIO. I'll be right back. Let's take this off. All right, it's out. Let's lift it up. It is actually not out. Let me unscrew this one all the way. We should be good. Now let's take a look. And there we go. And look, we did have good contact, maybe even a little bit too much liquid metal. No spillage, it seems. Yeah, now I'm gonna clean this up and let's install everything. It's all good now. We're all set up. Obviously, I gotta recircle the liquid, liquid metal. That's why I'm really, that's why it's all kind of clumped up. But here's what we need to do. So we have the heat spreader. It's going to go on top like that, but we need to put liquid metal here make sure that it actually makes contact with the proper IO die at the top and the CCD. And then we will put it on and we are going to use the screws included here as well as the Allen key to actually get it right. But yeah, we will apply some liquid metal, lay it down and we'll be good to go. Liquid metal is all good now on the 9800X3D as well as on the heat spreader. This is a thinner layer as well as this doesn't need to be perfectly. It just needs to cover it. That's why I made sure I did. Now I'm going to place it down and screw it in. Whoa, look at that. Super duper shiny. I am going to clean it, but now let's prep the liquid freezer three. I'm going to put it here in the front. Why am I putting it in the front? The GPU doesn't run hot at all. Like this thing is perfectly fine. It has fresh air here, but this CPU I want running as cool as possible. That way I can get the freshest air possible. And then might heat up the GPU like one or two C. I do not care. This pulls like 100 watts max um and then exhaust fresh air so i'm going to switch that fan um allow the freshest air for the cpu as well as just it's the proper way to do this for this kind of amd cpu so let's get it all set up now all right so it's a couple hours later been busy but i finally got the aio installed i'm about to put on the kingpin kpx best thermal paste out here I like putting the fans behind the AIO. Sadly, I could not do that. I had to put them in the front, but like, this is pretty good. And like, look, I have clearance for the GPU. I can take it out. This is super tight. Um, 5090 tough is pretty big. Yeah, like this is like, I can put my hand in it. It's about it. But yeah, um, let's uh, put on the thermal paste and then I'll get it going.
Oh yeah. It's actually the next day. I had a little bit of trouble actually getting proper contact with the heat spreader. Um, I think part of it was just because of how I took off the air cooler first and the back plate wasn't good. So I just kind of redid that and it works fine now, but let's do two, eight, 18, enter and enter. And let's let this run for about 10 minutes again and see what we get on not just RAM, but also the CPU temps. Let's go. 10 minutes later, I don't know what Windows is doing, but 73 degrees. So we dropped two-ish degrees at a higher package power too. We're at 122, 123. It's about 10 watts higher. Looking at the frequency also, if you guys remember, so this is 4.8 straight. The other one before would like bounce like five gigahertz, like really low. Like the average was 4.4. So we did gain clock speed. Is this gonna matter for gaming? Probably not. But let's look at the RAM temps though. Let's see how those improve. Cause remember the Liquid Freezer 3 actually does have a VRM fan. It's kind of one of the reasons why this is so popular. We went from 39 degrees to 36. So about three C difference. This one I think dropped like one C, it wasn't as much. This one is as close to the CPU, so there's not as much heat getting kind of brought in through the board. But we do also have this now that I could throw on. I'll probably throw this on later. But yes, this will actually improve RAM temps even more, showing that, well, you know, liquid cooling is winning. So in conclusion, I think that if you're going to D-Lid, get that Thermal Grizzly heat spreader, or just run um, like a contact frame, like one of those thermal right contact frames they sell and put the IHS on top. I think that's gonna be your better option. I don't think that the air cooler is really worth it. Um, you can also save 50 bucks by not going with the heat spreader and just getting a contact frame for like 10 bucks. That's probably what I just recommend for everyone at this point. If you are going to D-Lid, honestly, I'd say you don't even need to D-Lid these CPUs. They are not that super hot. You can use the offset mount that's like on the liquid freezer three that is required actually they don't give you another option do that and i think honestly that is going to be your best option i will leave affiliate links down below to everything also if for some reason you want a delated 9800 x3d i'm probably going to sell mine or if not i'm going to sell the 9950 x3d so if you're looking to pick up either one of those two cpus let me know down below in the comments join the discord um and it will i'll sell it to you because i just I don't need both of these CPUs. I only have one PC. But if you guys have enjoyed, hit that like button down below, subscribe, join the Discord if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later in the next one. Potentially a 5090 benchmark video. Peace.